Many SoRare managers use SoRare data to help them value cards, whether it's to sell one on the secondary market, potentially buy one there, or make a bid on an auction. However, it's important to understand exactly what goes into the valuations and why we show multiple on SoRare data. Let's use Sporting's Sebastian Coates as our first example. As you can see on his player page, we have his exact number of limited, rare, super rare, and unique cards, as well as a primary valuation for each scarcity. And below that, we have the average prices paid for each scarcity of card over the past three days, seven days, two weeks, and one month, as well as the lowest price currently available on the secondary market, shown as the floor price. So what exactly is included in each average price? The time frame is obvious by the name of each, but the valuation is the average price of all auctions and public offers, which are cards on the secondary market and purchased for the asking price. Now, you may be asking why direct private offers are not included, which is a fair question. The reason these are not included is because they don't always reflect a fair market price. While plenty of cards are sold this way and are close to recent sales averages, there are a plethora of transactions that are not, including loans, purchases that include cards in addition to ETH, as well as some that are clearly way out of range for one reason or another. Trying to filter out these potentially questionable trades may constitute financial advice, and so rare data simply does not provide financial advice. Nevertheless, so rare data still provides price transparency through our price graphs, which are available on all player pages, and they include all auctions plus public and private offers. As a result, buyers and sellers can make their informed decisions using those data points. These time-based averages also play a big role in SoRare Data's card value computations. We'll show the most recent time frame available based on whether there were any sales during each time. For example, the three-day average will be used if there were any auctions or public offers over the past three days. However, if there were none, then we'll use the seven-day average. And if there are no sales in the past week, we'll move to the two-week average, and so on. And if a card hasn't been sold recently, we'll use the lifetime price average of the card, which generally happens more with super rare and unique cards than limiteds and rares. However, there are times when the sober data value for a card is below the most recent average prices. And that's because the floor price, or the lowest available public offer on the market, is below the recent average. In other words, someone is willing to sell their card for less than what they've been selling for recently, which means the value of the card is less than it's been. Determining the value of a card is a complicated process. Let SoRare Data help you make the most informed decisions.